This video is going to be about the Dell PowerEdge R7015. This system is very similar to the Dell R750 because it's a 15th generation server, but it's also different at the same time. All of these 75 type of units have AMD EPIC processors. It looks very similar to the R740 XD from outside, even though it's a 15th generation system. This has only one Dell EPIC CPU, which is very capable and very cheap. We're going to build this particular system with a 30 core processor. Now, I'm gonna take off the cover and show you what's inside. Okay, I took the top off. We can see the six fans in the front, and they're here to cool the 12 3.5 inch hard drives. There's also a CPU, heat sink under the air baffle. There's also plenty of DIMM ports and a H330 rate card in this case. Also, there's a network daughter card installed on the motherboard. In this particular case, we have a Dell Boss dual port NVMe card. Okay, now I'm going to take the air baffle off and show you guys the heat sinks and dims. Okay, the plastic air baffle is off and we can see a huge heat sink due to the large size of the AMD EPIC CPU. We can also see eight empty dims on each side. This motherboard is quite a bit smaller than the one found in the R740 XD. There's also two PSUs in the back, but right now I'm going to put the cover back on and show you guys the back of this unit. Okay, now looking at the back of the system, you can see some serial ports, such as a SVGA video port, iDRAC port, two network ports, RJ45, two USB ports, and like I said earlier, you can see here there's a daughter card installed with two SFP Plus ports. In this particular case, the power supply is 750 watts. So this is the overall appearance of the system, and now I'm going to show you the parts we're installing in this video. Okay, here are the components that we will be installing. As mentioned earlier, this is the Dell Boss Dual NVMe card, and we will be using this as the main storage. The CPU that we picked is the AMD EPIC 75 II. This is a great CPU that's about $200 with 30 cores. For the memory, we chose 16 ECC registered memory sticks, and each of them are 16 gigs, by the way. So we're going to have plenty cores and storage. We are going to install the operating system on the NVMe card, and both drives will be in RAID 1. Since this particular system has the HBA330 card, it will be easy to use it for unraid, true NAS, or anything of that type of virtualization, even ZFS. Okay, the memory is installed, and I took the heat sink off. It's held by four screws, and as you can see, there are three more screws to hold down the CPU. Now, I'm going to unscrew them and install the processor. Okay, I installed the CPU, and I just wanted you guys to see how to apply thermal compound. In this case, I use ceramic U thermal compound, and on smaller CPUs, I just put a small dub in the middle, and that's it. But this CPU is huge, so I just did three lines on the CPU. And once I put the heat sink on it, these lines will evenly spread and cover the full area of the CPU. When you install the new CPU in memory, this particular system takes a while to initialize. Initially, you're going to see a message like this, just be patient. The system is going to come up very soon. Okay, the system is initializing. You can see the current BIOS, which we're going to update later on. We also have another video showing you how to update BIOS and lifecycle controller and all other firmware on Dell PowerEdge servers. Click the card on the top right corner of your screen if you want to see it. Now, we're going to press F2 for the system setup and reset all of the settings to the default ones. Okay, all settings are reset, including iDRAC. Now, the system is reading all the new parts and we're going to install Windows on this box. Okay, I updated the firmware and installed Windows on the server. And you can see the storage disk is Dell Boss. And this particular system also comes with a dual port 25 gig network card. And another notable thing is this particular CPU. The AMD EPIC 7502 has 32 cores, 64 threads, and overall it's a very powerful processor. We also have 256 gigs of memory, and if you have any questions about this system, or if you would like to purchase it, just leave a comment on this video. The user benchmark results are as expected. It's complaining that the GPU is missing. You can add a GPU to the system, but the purpose of the system is mostly to be used as an Unraid, VMware, and true NAS server. It has plenty of space for hard drives, and you can also install additional NVMe drives and it has plenty of memory and cores. I wouldn't use the system for video editing, but it's possible. But either way, it's cheaper to buy a workstation for that purpose. 
The Blackmagic RAW speed test results are pretty good. You can see that there's no GPU, but the CPU itself is very capable. As I mentioned before, this is a very, very powerful CPU. Cinebench is the last benchmark that we are going to do. Its single core performance is not that great, but since the CPU has 32 cores, you can see that it makes these results great. In conclusion, the system is very capable. You can easily run a whole company just on this system. It has plenty of hard drives, space, plenty of memory, and 64 threads. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. Built an empire of stars.